Hello, this is Warlord, and what we're going to do today is a little bit different. We're going to look at uh, two or three items today instead of just one, and these are things that uh, I get asked quite a bit over, and things that change a little sometimes from version to version, or things that people have some trouble with in translating from the older tutorials, even though they're kind of done the same way. So we're going to take a look at a few things like that, and that's going to include how to make a rotation dummy, uh, you know, without it doubling back on you. How to increase your workspace when you run out of camera with your present scene. And also we're going to take a look at how to use a 2D background with uh, with a character, which I did when I 3D printed uh, Curve Man. We're going to, I'm going to show you how I put that little video together, because I've had several questions about it, and it's a whole lot easier than you think. And it's just combining an a animated character with a 2D background. Anyway, one thing about iClone 7 is it has matured to a professional tool. But it's also still as simple a tool as you want it to be. Don't let all the bells and whistles scare you off. It's still just pretty simple. I mean, it's a lot of it's still point and click and thing. Like we can come over to accessories and add guns just by clicking. Uh, we can go. Uh, we can go over to props. Go to sky. Again, we just double click. Now you can't see the sky right there because of the way I've got it rotated. We can go to terrain, add the combat stage, then come in and just quickly do some lighting. Now we'll go over some of these things more in detail later. I'm just kind of giving you an overview if you've never seen anything like this. I mean, we'll, we'll go through things when we discuss all this and how to, uh, how to set these things up like this. But all I'm doing right now is just showing you how simple it is to actually get something going in iClone. Now we're going to right click, go to perform, catwalk start, right click, perform, catwalk loop, and this is where you'd loop it however many times you wanted to keep walking. Right click, perform, catwalk in, right click, perform, shoot and then she'll walk off shooting as you can see that didn't take very long at all so don't let everything that iClone can do and don't let everything that you see up here bother you just use what you have to use and make it to your own satisfaction and then start learning more things as you go on anyway let's go ahead and get started with what we're going to look at today Now this is an answer to another question I get about how to rotate an object without it speeding up and slowing down too much or worse reversing back instead of going the full circle. Well that's actually pretty simple. Let's say we're going to do this for 1800 frames. Half of 1800 is going to be 900. Half of that's going to be 450. I want to do this at four separate places. I want to do this in quarterly intervals. So again we have 1800, half of that's 900, half of that is 450. So I'm going to type in 450 frames. Now you can be more precise and we're going to be here. But what you want to do is turn about a quarter of a frame. If you turn way too much or way too little, that's how it speeds up or slows down. Now let's move on to the next one's going to be 900. And we'll move it again around a quarter turn. And what you do is just keep moving up 450 frames. Moving it a quarter turn each time. Or however much you really want to turn it. And you'll have it done. Now that's going to be a slow turn. All the way to the end. And what we can do now is open up our timeline. And we can come in here and collect this with collect clip. Oops, guess I better get on the right part. I'm not doing too good with this, am I? Just watch my mouse. Can't do anything with it. Anyway, we come in here, we right click, and we add to perform, and we'll call this rotate. Now, let's go back to the beginning of our timeline. Let's remove object animation. 
right click perform and now it'll rotate and let's go ahead and let it play out and remember like I said you don't want to go too far on your quarterly move you don't want to go too far forward or too far back because that's where it actually starts speeding up and slowing down in between the four passes in between the four uh, frames but the reason we broke it into four is that's just easy we will just use it quarterly you can take any number and break it into four and rotate it like this and this way it won't double back on you now another good thing about doing it this way is you also have where you can come into the animation and now you can control the speed of the animation by slowing it down I mean speeding up slowing it down with the the size and I guess if you wanted to you could come in even further and right click add to perform call this fast and now you're going to have two different speeds in there and you can make as many of these as you wanted at whatever speed you wanted whatever length you wanted and then you just come over to your props under custom hit your plus and save it just hit your plus right here save it name it well you also one thing you want to make sure you do if you're not familiar with this is make sure you set it as a dummy that way it uses the control D toggle that's also the shadow plane coming on underneath it but that way you can use the control D toggle on it and it won't render so now what you do is just press the plus name it save it and now you have a dummy that you can use Okay, let's take a look at a problem we run into when we're working with big props and things, big scene, and we run out of scene, we run out of workspace. What I'm going to do is drag over the city block prop, and then I'm going to come way out so we can see what's going on. Then I'm going to move it down a little. I'm going to hit Control K so that we can multi duplicate it and then I'll bring it over and line it up put a couple more in there and you notice how they're disappearing let me put one more at seven but you notice so the problem is they're cut off they're disappearing into the workspace now you can go over to camera and drag in a big camera if you want, but if you've already got your scene set up and don't want to go to all that hassle, then, and this even works on the preview camera, click on camera, come over here and add your extra 9. And now, you've got a lot larger workspace to work. So let's take a look at using a simple 2D background composite. All I did here was take a picture of my desk with my phone. And you can see here how the lighting and the shadows are. Now I'm going to move Curve Man in here. And you can already tell that it does a pretty good job, just like that, of matching the shadow of Curve Man to the shadow here. Now in reality there isn't a shadow here. You'll notice there's no shadow from this uh, Curve Man bust because when I took this picture I'm standing between the light source and the picture. So there really isn't a shadow. But you can still use it to help line up your character if you want to. But the best thing to do is turn on your grid and line it up with the grid. And there's different preferences here. This is personal preference. I usually set mine fairly flat. Some people like it down like that. And now I want it to be just a little bit smaller, so I'm going to push it down. And then I'm going to use this to move him with instead of actually moving it. Now it looks like our shadow is a little off. It's leaning this way where that's more towards noon. So I'm just going to move it a little. And then I'm going to come down here and just kill it out a little since there's not a whole lot of shadow there. Now from here, what I did was I went over to Motion, went into Mason, and used the Walk Think Motion. And 
you'll see here it actually lined up pretty good maybe just a little bit maybe need to be a little further back now I'm using the camera not the physical move okay now another thing we can do is we can point the head towards him to make it look like he's looking at it we would have to do that every so many seconds or we can just come in here and use a dummy of course I use I like to use a plain old box because it takes up less overhead, it has less faces. Since this is 2D, you're not really going to know where to put it until you click him and tell him to look at it. Now you kind of know where to put the box. Up, down, things like that. And it gives him something to stare at. And then of course set it as a dummy so that it won't render and then now you have this where he at least keeps a look at it now right here he walks away from it and I would really just you know you can leave that alone or you can come in right here click him set free And now let's see what we've got. Now again, this is just using a, a still image as the background. But it also gives you the basics of how to work with a 2D with a composite. And using that dummy is a whole lot easier than moving his head every so many seconds. Now you'll notice here, because of the way I took it being in shadow, we have a big difference in color. You could come in and mess with your lighting and things, but in this case, I'm just going to come in and darken down this color, since this is the way that Realusion did it for the character. As you can see, we're getting closer. So all you'd really have to do here is just come in and keep working on your color, and perhaps go in and set your lights till they're a little bit darker. Uh, in fact... We'll just come in and look and see. You may want to just turn. Oh, that's a little too dark all of a sudden. Right there, that's not too bad. You just come in and you just mess with those things until they look pretty close to each other in uh, color. Well, that does it for this first installment. I hope there were some things there that'll help you. We're going to continue on like this in future installments. And there'll be some long tutorials too, just like there's always been. And what we're looking at here is something we're going to go over in the next one. And it's just how to do, how to throw together a quick fly through, like an establishing shot through the cloud. And this will be using uh, image layer and things like that. And I'll provide the image layer for you. Anyway, I'm glad you stopped by and I hope this helps.